Speed, full speed, here we go, up the back straight. Let's go, let's go. Now this is full speed as well. Oh, he's gone down. And we're back, ladies and gentlemen. How's it going? Hope everybody's doing good. Today we're gonna have some real good fucking fun here. We're gonna be doing another part three, beginner's guide to Formula One. And today I wanna talk about the racing line. If anybody's heard this before, what is this racing line people are talking about? Do all the drivers do it? Is it any good? Is there importance to it? There's tremendous importance to the racing line. This is like the racing driver's Bible. And if you don't have a racing line, you pack your bags and you go home. I mean, it's almost like saying a boxer doesn't know how to punch. Okay, I mean, it really is basic as that. Now, for some people that have begun watching racing now, especially from Drive to Survive, it's got a huge interest. A lot of people, I suppose, they don't know exactly what they mean by the racing line. So we're going to explain it today because I was even, funny enough, I even got the idea for this podcast only a few nights ago. I was out in a bar and I was talking to these girls and they love, I mean, these girls could tell you more information fucking pretty much than I could about the drivers. <laughs> they know their birthdays, the fucking, how tall they are, these guys. I mean, it's fucking ridiculous, right? But what they didn't know is, and they do enjoy the technical part, but they just don't know where to find the information. So hopefully I'm going to help you guys. And they don't know what the racing line is either. And I was explaining to them, I'm like, oh, so that's why they they kind of cut in and take a shortcut around the bend, this sort of thing, and, and going out here on the track and angles. and So it'll make sense to you guys by the end of this episode. So before we get into it, right, what we're going to do is we're going to go on YouTube today and we're going to go look at the racing line itself. And we're going to go on board with Mika Hackman. Now, YouTube is a bit funny, guys, with, um, with copyright claims. So I've managed to find, thank God, a free licensed video that we can use. With risk-free, 100% risk-free on this one. Thank God. So, because uh, I tried even to record a few days ago and it was a copyright claim. You're like, fuck. And I don't understand it because there's so many other channels that use YouTube clips and they get away with it. Now, then again, you hear a lot of stories that people don't get away with something either. So, anyway, I'll figure that out eventually, but we have, a, we have a good enough video here today to show you the racing line. So before we get into it, guys, the racing line helps the driver to get around the track as fast as he can. Okay, that's what it's here for. There's a purpose. Like, we're not just sort of flying around and putting the car over here, putting up the car over there because we're bored or it's you know, just for the laugh, okay? It's it's very, very important. Now, the racing line is all about getting through corners as fast as you can. So, there's a golden rule of play with racing. Slow in, fast out of the bends. Now, we're gonna get into that little in a little more detail in a while, but it applies with the racing line. So what you need to do, guys, if you imagine, right, uh, the, Olymp the Olympians, so you know the way they line up. Is it one to eight or one to nine? I can never remember that one. Anyway, well, whatever it is, one to eight, one to nine. And you can see there's the guy in the inside, right? And then a little bit further, the guy in second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. Now you see the way, and forgive me guys, maybe some people know this already or maybe it's obvious, right? But there's a reason for this. Now I'm gonna explain it. The guy in first, he's in the inside. Now, if you look at the guy last position in eighth or ninth or whatever it is, do you always notice the way they're always like about 100 meters up, the, up the, the track? They're starting up the track further, right? There's a reason for this. Because the guy in number one spot is taking the shortcut around the corner. And you can always see it, you know, when they start the race. All of a sudden they go around the first bend and the guy in first spot, he looks like he's way behind, but he's right up on top of everybody when they come onto the next straight because he's taking the shortcut around the track. And that's exactly what racing drivers do. Now guys, by the way, sorry, apologies. You should be watching this on YouTube here before I start, okay? Um, this is definitely the best place to watch because you're gonna see the onboard footage um, and how I'm gonna explain the racing line, how it all works. So apologies if there's anybody listening on Spotify or Apple, if you're just listening to the audio file. You can still listen, I'll still try and do a good job if I can. Uh, I'll do my best, but I would definitely hit on the YouTube and watch this episode on here. 
Um, so guys, that's back to the point. It's about getting around the, the corner in a shortcut. Now, why don't we start off in lane one? In other words, stay tight on the inside and then keep, keep around the inside around the bend. Because the cars are going so fast, guys, that there's no possible way you could stay in that lane. So if you imagine like a Formula One car is so going so quick that if it was trying to stay in, let's say like the number one lane, right? And in other words, like there was a line even separating between lane one and two, and he was trying to stay in that lane, there's no way he could because the cars are just going too fast and he'll just go boom, straight over, he'll drift all the way over to the outside of the track. So it's the same type of thing here. So what happens is you need to make a straight line as much as you can in every corner because it's very simple. If you're in a corner, the car naturally is slowing down because the engine's getting bogged down, it's tied up, uh, it, there's stress on the engine and obviously you've got to slow down for some corners, okay, that's obviously a given. But the straighter the wheel, the faster the car goes. So the straighter you can make every corner out there, the faster your car will go. So we always take a, they, all the drivers take a wide line into the corner, then take the shortcut through the corner, and then go wide out of the bend. So I'm gonna show you now exactly what I mean, all right? So bear with me, I'm not gonna try and confuse you here. And so, so let's go up to hacking in here now, guys. And just bear with me, we'll just split the screen here. Okay, here we go. So we're on board with Hakkinen now in Hungary. Now, this is a perfect lap because we've got a couple of left and right straight after each other. Uh, it's perfect. So what Hakkinen's gonna do here is he's gonna take, like we know, the best line through the bend as much as he can. Now he's in a race at the moment, but it doesn't matter if you're in practice qualifying a race the racing line is always the same. So, let's start off, shall we? So we're gonna start off with hacking and going into a left-hand corner. Okay, now we're just gonna go back a little bit. So, you can see Hakkinen is going into a left-hand bend here, right? Now, let's just go back up again. He's over on the right. So guys, you can see my mouse where it's pointing here. So this is the left-hander here right up to where my mouse is about here is the apex, which we call it, is the middle of the bend. That's where you wanna get the shortcut because it's inside. So what he does is he's over to the right-hand side. Now, why is he over in the right-hand side going into a left-hand corner? Because he's trying to open up, as we call it, open up the corner as much as he can. Now, if you imagine, guys, if he was in the inside, which I was just talking about a minute ago, if he was in the inside here on the left where my mouse is, and if he kept in the inside all the way up, and he's going at such a speed, and he was trying to get, keep in tight, keep in tight, keep in tight, he's gonna have to go really slow because he's only a certain amount of area to keep the car in, okay? So whereas if he's over here, he opens up the corner. So he can carry more speed into the bend and get, get through the corner and get out of the bend as fast as he can. So let's see what he does. He's over here on the right, He's gonna do all his braking in a straight line. Now he starts to bring the car in. So you just see the way he's come from the right. He's coming in now, he's bringing the car into the left. He's not at the apex yet because it's a very long corner. But you can see now, watch. Bang! Now he's at the apex. This is the middle of the corner. This is the shortest way around the corner. Now what he's gonna do, he's gonna let the car drift out all the way to the outside of the bend. Okay, he's still at the apex. Now. He's not gonna keep it in tight. He comes out. Now, there's an, an immediate right after this, so he, normally he would use all the track here, okay? So I'll explain that just in a few minutes. But you can see the way he doesn't keep it in tight. He lets the car drift out, right? Because he's trying to, to straighten up the wheel. Once you straighten up the wheel, you power on through, through the bends, uh, through the, down to the main straight. Now here he comes, he comes up to this next right-hander. You can see now, he's over on the left. So if he's going into a left-hander, he's starting off on the right-hand side. If he's now going into a left-hander here, as you can see, he's starting off on the, uh, yeah, sorry, I'm getting confused. If he's going into a right-hander, he's gonna start off on the left-hand side of the track. 
Right, so you can see all the way over. Now he's making his way into the apex. Bang. And he clips it there. So basically, guys, it's the shortest way around the corner. So let's keep going. He lets the car drift out wide. Actually, I'll just go back there now one second. That's a perfect example of what I'm speaking about. So once it, you can see now he's in the right-hander, he's at the apex. He's going to straighten up the car, and he's going to let the car drift out all the way to the outside of the bend. So he gets the smoothest, quickest exit out of the bend to slingshot his way up to the next straight. So here, watch him now. And you can see he's all the way over to the left. Now, let's keep going. Now he's going to a left-hander. He's on the right. Now this is a really fast bend. So we'll keep going. On the left, on the, uh, sorry, on the, he's on the right. He's on the right. Coming into the apex. Watch him now. Bang. Clips that, lets the car drift out all the way to the outside. Now he's going into a right-hander. He's going to start on the left. Over on, he's now on the left-hand side. He's going to, this is a long bend, so he's going to take his time getting into the apex. And you can see he hasn't apexed right in tight yet. Bang. There he is. And from here, he's going to put the shoe down and fucking accelerate as fast as he can. Boom, there we go. Now, this is a really tight one because this, this is a chicane. So it's a quick right-left, right? So it's, it's a... The rule of the racing line kind of goes a bit pear-shaped on this one. So I, I won't go into it today, but let, let's just see him. Apex, apex. Let's the car drift wide. Now he's going into a, a left-hander. He, again, he's over on the right. Apex. Bang. He's right on top of the curb on that one. There we go. Now he's into a right-hander. Over on the left. Apex. Let's the car drift. Beautiful. He actually got the lap record for this lap. So it's a great one to, uh, to go with. Over on the left. Apex. Dr let the car drift. Over to the right, apex, apex, gets on the power, lets the car slingshot out of the corner, bang. So let's watch that again without any interruption from me this time, guys, shall we? So I hope this is making sense, guys. So here we go. Mika Hakkinen, The Racing Line. Oh, it's fucking orgasmic to watch. No bang, apex, apex. Apex bang. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. So that was it. That was a lap record by him. Now, I'm going to show you as well, guys, before we uh, close up on today. I'm um, just making sure this is still all recording perfectly. It is indeed lovely stuff. And where are we at? Okay. Now, where I'm going to show you how the drivers use the throttle and where do they brake, where do they get on the accelerator. So, as I was saying at the start of the episode here, Excuse me. So what they do, guys, is they get on the power. Uh, sorry, one second. I'm just going to mark this, guys. And where are we? Perfect. And lovely. 13.30. So the other important part of the dance here, as you'd call it, for the Formula One boys, is the dance consists of the racing line plus what they're doing with the brake and accelerator. Now, the principle, like we spoke about at the start, is slow into the bend and fast out. Now, that really does apply for 95% of any racing. Sometimes it's better to actually go faster in and keep the power on, and you'll be able to get out even faster, depending on your car setup, your engine speed, your aerodynamics, mechanical grip. It's complicated, but anyway, 95% of the time, it's slow in, fast out, and that's it, right? So, 
what we're going to do here is we're going to see, we're going to show you now, obviously we're not going to talk about the racing line here. <clears throat> we're going to go through the same lap, but we're going to show you where Hakkinen is braking and where he's getting on the accelerator and why. All right? So, let's go. So he's going to the left-hander. Now, you can hear, the, probably hear the car, maybe you probably didn't, because I'm talking, right? <laughs> but right now, he's... He's slamming on the brakes. He's going from, I'd say, seventh gear down to third. So he's dropping down four gears, right? So he's got to have a, maybe about 100 meters to brake before he hits that corner. Or maybe even a little bit, maybe 60, 70 meters, depending on how their, their setup is and, and everything. So the golden rule here is what Hacken is doing before he gets to the bend, he needs to do all his braking, most of it anyway, 95% of it, in a straight line because he's got to go down the gears, he's got to slam on the brakes, bang, 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 down three or four gears before he gets into the bend. Now, why does he do it? Why doesn't he just wait longer? Because the longer he waits, he's going to overshoot the bend because it probably makes sense, right? The cars are going fast. He needs time to slow down. He needs time to get down to the, to the four gears, three, drop three or four gears, set the car up because this, the corner will only have a certain amount of grip as well for the car. So he has to prepare the car, maybe that's the best way to explain it, before he gets it to the apex. So it's all about hacking in, slowing the car down, getting the car ready to get to the apex. So by the time he gets to the apex, which is the middle of the bend, he's ready to fucking nail the throttle and get out of the corner as fast as he can. So the first part of the bend, you slow it down, get into the bed, get it nice and neat, smooth, organized, at to the apex, and then once he gets to the apex, it's bang. He needs to be on that throttle as fast as, and hard as, and aggressively as he can. So watch him now. Slowing it. Now, time, maybe, no, there could be a bit of a sound delay on this, okay, because this, this video is old. But so it does sound like he's getting on the power just after the apex here. Then again, it depends on how his his car setup is. But this is what he's trying to do: get to the apex, get the power on. So listen again. Yeah, that's slightly just. We'll go back again here. So let's just go back to the to the end to the uh, this corner here. He's coming up. See, he's breaking in a straight line. Now he's kind of a little bit of a curve coming in, but the gradient on that track as well is allowing him to, to come in. Slowing it down, slowing it down. See, he's getting the car ready, ready. Like he's setting up the car here. Bang! Throttle down. Full speed, full speed. Here we go, up the back straight. Let's go, let's go. Now this is full speed as well, almost. Oh no, he's gone down. And here we go. Now, he's going to a long right-hander here. So what's he going to do? You can see he's slowing the car down, getting it smooth, setting it up to get to that apex. Once he gets to the apex, bang, throttle down. You can see it's still slowing. Apex, bang. He even got on it just before the apex. Here we go again. Slowing the car down in a straight line. Slow, 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 slow. Apex, apex, bang, and he goes. There he goes again, slowing it down. Apex, bang, go. Slowing, apex, bang, go. Here we go. See what I mean? Slow, apex, boom. Fuck yeah, come on. Apex, yeah, go, 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 go. Great fucking lap. I mean, great lap. And those cars now, guys, uh, this is 2001. So, it's... <sighs> These cars were monsters back in the day. Um, they were brilliant. So guys, that's it. That's the racing line. Uh, that is how the, the drivers use the throttle. In fact, we'll be, you know what, before we go, let's just go back to that corner again. And we'll just show you, without me interrupting you this time, let's just watch Hakkinen the way he, the way he uses the power. And remember, he's slowing it down in a straight line. Once he gets to the middle of the bend, the apex, Boom, throttle down, and he needs to go as fast as he fucking can, okay? So here we go. Oh, maybe I should go back, sorry. Right, here we go.
Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant, guys. Oh, just fucking wonderful. So, guys, that was the Hungara Ring. Mika Hakkinen on board 2000. Did we say 2001? Fuck me. Long time ago. But just goes to show the, the, the cars haven't actually changed that much in the last 20 years in terms of speed-wise. Now, they're probably about... Uh, oh, I'd have to double-check it now. But they're maybe about three seconds a lap now, guys... I always say that in racing, one or two tenths, if you're competing, is a lifetime. It doesn't sound much. So even though I'm saying one or two tenths is, is, is every, it's huge, so Jesus, three seconds, but every car is three seconds faster these days. So it's, uh, it's amazing how, how the technology has come along these days. Um, but again, it, it, monster cars, monster cars. They were the V10s back in the day. They sounded like fucking animals. I'm sure you've, if you've never seen them before, guys, you should definitely YouTube the V10 Ferraris and all those F1 cars. Unbelievable beasts, beasts. So guys, that was it. That was part three of um, learning about motor racing in Formula One. We'll be back again the next time. I'm gonna, I'm gonna explain downforce if I can. It's gonna be a tricky one to try and explain, but we're gonna do our best the next time. Guys, thanks for listening. Talk to you later.